Hey everyone, welcome to our Sunday morning service. This uh, beautiful Sunday morning is the 20th of December. It's a Christmas Sunday in about, in exactly five days, it'll be Christmas. All right, so hopefully you've got everything ready, everything uh, situated, all the gifts are, are bought uh, for your loved ones. And uh, remember, you know, in your getting, don't forget me, all right? Hopefully you have my gift uh, already wrapped and ready under the Christmas tree. All right. So, um, but welcome again, uh, whether you're here locally in, in Fort Lauderdale, Sunrise, Margate, Lauder Hill, Tamarack, wherever you are, welcome. Uh, Coral Springs, um, Davie, uh, 
Southwestern, wherever you are in South Florida. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you're all the way across the pond, the other side of the world, we want to welcome you as well. Thank you so much for joining us uh, uh, for our Christmas morning service. It's going to be a very special service. I have my Christmas decoration and everything all set and ready. All right. So, um, just to get you in the spirit of Christmas, uh, even I'm playing some Christmas music in the background. You hear it? Yes, sir. So don't ever say Bishop wasn't ready for Christmas. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm even wearing my Christmas shirt. See? All right. But I want to say welcome again to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this great, great experience with us. Um, just to uh, let you know, take care of some business here. Uh, we have, uh, we're now streaming on Vimeo. All right, so hopefully uh, you'll be tuning in, or if you haven't already been tuning in uh, uh, from Vimeo. It's a new streaming platform. And, you know, there's a couple of things about Vimeo that I noticed. If you haven't gone there yet, you haven't uh, watched us from Vimeo yet, it's much clearer, it sounds much better, and, uh, you know, everything is just smoother. So I want to encourage you, go to Vimeo. If you have not yet done so, download the app uh, and uh, look for Grace Temple. I think you could find us by saying, by typing Grace Temple or Grace Temple Event and follow us, all right? Make sure you hit that follow button. That way when we come live, you'll know. And uh, similar to what you do uh, with YouTube or Facebook. But this is better, all right? So tune in to us. And ultimately what we want to do is get everyone on board with Vimeo. That way, you know, other folks coming in from Facebook and, 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 uh, and YouTube, Twitter and all those places that we're, platforms that we're uh, streaming from, they'll be able to come on in and join us on Vimeo as well. All right? You can get to us. You can also get to us. And I don't think uh, um, too many people know this. Uh, I believe Yvette might have sent the link on our WhatsApp group this morning. But all you do, you can get to Vimeo's directly from our webpage, from Grace Temple Church webpage. So, uh, go to our website, gracetempleonline.com, gracetempleonline.com, and you can you can watch us right there. It's, it's all there. It's open. It's ready, and you don't have to download a thing. Just just um, if if you got the link this morning, just click on that link from 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 your WhatsApp. Just click on it, and it'll take you straight to uh, to our our page. All right, uh, where we're now broadcasting live on Vimeo. All right, so get uh, gracetempleonline.com. Go to gracetempleonline.com. You'll find us there, and we'll be live and living color. All right? Okay, so welcome everyone again. Um, I'm just so grateful to the Lord for his wonderful blessing and his favor towards us. Um, you know, he has kept us thus far. It's another... Um, the end of another year, and and this year, I believe this year takes the cake, y'all. It was it was a mess to say the least. This year was just an absolute mess of a year. But hey, all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to His purpose. Because I know God has a purpose in everything that happens and everything that that He does. And if there's one thing I've learned, if there's one thing. I've learned through this whole pandemic and 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 the shutdowns and and the mess that's been going on politically, just just everything. If there's one thing I've learned is that uh, I can only I can only lean and depend on God. See, man will fail you. They'll fail you in every way possible. You you think about it, they'll fail you. Uh, this this pandemic did not have to happen, but it did because of man's failure, because me, of man's carelessness, or w whether it was just carelessness or deliberate, it was uh, the actions of men that is putting us through all this heartache and all this mess. And as for the folks that have lost loved ones, 
it is so sad and just such an unnecessary um, act of, of death and destruction uh, in the lives of, of, of people. And I tell you what, I, I, I've learned through this that I can only trust God. I've learned through this that I can only depend on Jesus. And as we continue, as we go through, uh, we're almost to the end of the year. Our our New Year's Eve service is coming up. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit more about that. This year, our New Year's Eve service, of course, will be on the 31st, which is a Thursday and we'll start at 8.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m., from 8.30 to about 9.30. We're going to keep it about an hour long, and um, and it's going to be great, though, because I'm going, to, I'm going to have a word from the Lord for you for 2021. So make sure you join. Make sure you're a part of that experience come December 31st, Thursday, December 31st, because it is going to be one of those services to remember, one of those messages. And and those of you who've been following me, been with me for a while, you know that on the 31st of December, God always sends a word for his people. And so this year, not be, this even because in spite of COVID, uh, it's not going to stop or hinder the move of God. So God is going to speak to his people come the 31st, and you need to be on. You need to not just be here, but invite someone to join you and be on with us at 8.30 on New Year's Eve for our New Year's Eve service, all right? You don't want to miss that. Uh, also, um, just to let you know, I did talk about this on Wednesday, that um, on the uh, 23rd, which is two days before Christmas, this Wednesday, we will not be having any Bible studies. Bible study will take a break uh, because of Christmas, and we will also take a break on the 30th, which is the day before our New Year's Eve service. All right, so the next service after today will be on Thursday, the 30, well, I'm sorry, let me back up because I don't want to give you any misinformation. All right. On, on this Wednesday, the 23rd, no service, all right? But the 27th, which is a Sunday, we'll be having service for sure, all right? Uh, but come in terms of Bible studies, we will not be having any Bible study on the 23rd nor the 30th, but on the 31st, we'll be having our New Year's Eve service, all right? Hope I didn't mess that up too much, confuse you too much, all right? But our Sunday services are on. Uh, today's the 20th. Uh, next service is the 21st. Next Sunday service is the 27th. All right. And also uh, Thursday, 31st, uh, New Year's Eve service. All right. Uh, well, let's get right to it. Uh, it is time for uh, praise and worship. And before we get to praise and worship, I want to pray with you as we uh, look to God. Look to him, the only one who's able to keep us from falling. And I know, I know that nothing is too hard for God. I know that there is no barrier that can hinder God from pouring out his blessings in our lives. I know that nothing shall be called impossible unto our God. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're up against, just know this, that God is able. I said, God is able. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as we look to him tonight, today, as we look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, the only one who's able to keep us from falling. Father, we thank you today for your grace, your mercy, your peace. Thank you for your blood that never loses its power. Thank you, God, for your word, which is enough. Thank you for your faithfulness to your people. Thank you, God, for allowing us to see yet another Christmas Sunday, Lord. And thank you for allowing us, hallelujah, to weather the storm of COVID-19. And we don't know what you have in store for us next year, but we do know, Lord, that you will be with us. You're a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will, will we not fear 
Though the earth be removed And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea Hallelujah We know that you are our keeper We know that you are our shade upon our right hand And the sun will not smite us by day nor the moon by night God I ask for blessings and for favor Upon the lives of everyone that's tuned in tonight today Everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice I pray that your favor will rest, remain, and abide with them. Grant us grace during this Christmas season as we remember your birth, Lord God, and what it means for all of us. I pray that you protect us from the wiles of the enemy. Guard us and guide us and keep us by your power. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Uh, it is time for praise and worship. And I, you know, I, I chose this song for praise and worship. And I certainly hope it's not, it wasn't done selfishly, but it's a song that, um, you know, the words do mean a lot to me. And I'm sure it does for you as well. So let's just... I worship God together as we sing to his glory as we honor him with this song in Jesus Jesus 
right, I hope you were blessed by that as much as I was. Amen. Thank you so much for uh, just um, celebrating that with us. Uh, Jesus, the Lion and the Lamb. And I'm just grateful that He is my Savior. I'm just grateful that He's my Lord and He's my King. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad on that Christmas morning when Christ was born, and he, born, he was born, amen, so that he could die, think about that, to save humankind. And I'm thankful to God, I'm thankful to God that I, through God's grace, was included in that number. I'm glad that I'm saved. Come on in here. I wonder, do you understand how privileged you are? To know that you are a part of the family of God. To know that God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come on, God is good. God is faithful. And we're just grateful to him for all the wonderful blessings that he has afforded us. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let's get um, to this. It is offering time. The Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Thank God for those of you who have been consistent and systematic in your giving to the Lord. Thank you so much for your kind and your generous support over the the months, amen, for some of you over the years. Um, thank you so much for um, partnering with me, joining with me so that we can um, get the word of God out there so that dying men and women can and should be saved through the word of God. And you had everything to do with that. And I, I guarantee you this, I guarantee those of you who've been faithful, those of you who have continued to be, to commit yourself to giving to the Lord, uh, let me tell you this, a lot of people, you might not realize this, but a lot of people was born again out of this ministry. And it's because of your kindness and your generosity why those souls are now saved. Some of them have even gone on to, to, to preach and teach and become pastors themselves. Amen. Uh, but but God has been good to us, and it's because of your generosity that that uh, this is possible. So I know, I know there is a reward waiting for you in glory because of your faithfulness, because of your commitment to giving and to Grace Temple Church in particular. All right, I want to encourage everyone to continue to do so. Give, make up in your minds. It's a good start for the year to give to the glory of God. And there are the ways in which you can give right there on your screen. You can choose any one of those means and uh, and give safely. And um, you know, God, God, God's going to bless you. I know that sounds clichéic, but. I really do mean it from the bottom of my heart. God is going to bless you because of your kindness, because of your faithfulness, because of your commitment to giving to the glory of God. All right, there are the ways uh, in which you can, you can give. And we're going to look at our offering declaration together. All right, let me just uh, put it up here. As I honor the Lord Jehovah with my substance and the fruits of my income, I believe that God is opening the windows of heaven on my life and pouring out blessings that I don't have room enough to contain. The devourer is being rebuked and debts are being canceled. I believe that God is giving me power and creativity to get wealth, that his covenant might be established in the land. God's wisdom concerning all business and financial matters is coming to me as he surrounds me with supernatural favor like a shield. As I give today, it is being given back to me how good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. I am blessed so that I might be a blessing to others. All right, there you go. There you have it. Again, ways in which you can give, give to the glory of God. And, and oh, by the way, those of you that are watching me via our church's website, Right below the video there, right below where it's playing, there's a green 
box that you can just click on it and you can give right there, all right, from the web page. So uh, you can check that out. All right, all right. Thank you so much for your kind and your generous giving to the Lord. Amen. I know, I know God will bless you as a result of your giving. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get to it, though. It is time for the word. The Bible says, the Bible says that the word of God is sh sharp. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, it says. Amen. And it can pierce through a lot of things. Amen. A lot of the stuff that you're not sure about. A lot of the things that are going on in your life that you're concerned about. If you just lean on God, if you just trust God, if you just allow God to have his way, then God will bless you. All right, let's get to it. Um, we are going to look today at a very interesting topic, if I may say so myself. Uh, this is my story. That's the topic. This is my story. And oh, by the way, I have, um, before we get to the word, there is a special song that I want to play for everyone. And um, this song speaks to what we're about to discuss. And there's a, the writer of this song, Fanny Crosby, amen. Powerful testimony. When you get a chance, read about this great woman who wrote this powerful song, a song that has speak to many hearts over the years, and I'm sure it'll speak to your heart today. All right, all right. I hope you were blessed by that song. I certainly was. Uh, I I have a a picture here of um, of Fanny Crosby. Uh, she is the writer of this uh, song, and those glasses uh, are because she was blind. All right, she was she was born. Well, no, she wasn't born blind, she, but she. I think she was blinded, according to the article, she was blinded uh, at the age of um, six years old, right, when she was six, hold on, let me see, Fanny Crosby, born in 1820, died in 1815, blind at the age of six weeks, six weeks, and was a lifelong Methodist who began composing hymns at the age of six, uh, she became a student at the New York Institute of the Blind at age 15, and she joined the uh, faculty of the Institute at 22. Uh, she wrote, Fanny Crosby wrote about 9,000 hymns. Isn't that something? And I, I, I just, I mean, uh, the, talking about living for Jesus, amen, living for the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. All right, let's get to this. Uh, when you get a chance, go ahead and read that story of Fanny Crosby. It's a powerful testimony about God and God's goodness and, and some of the, the things that she has said uh, while she was alive. Very powerful, very inspiring, I, if I may say so. Uh, all right, so... Here we go. Uh, we are looking today at 
Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through verse 8. It's Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. Uh, this is my story. Fanny Crosby had her story. This is my story and how Christmas rewrote my history. All right. And I'm sure you can relate to this as well yourself because um, Christmas means to me and what it means to you is that the, the savior of our soul came into the world. Amen. And that was when the story of the rest of my life was written. Let's look at this, Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through verse 8. Uh, okay, here we go. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Glory to God which he poured out upon us abundantly. Let me get my trusty highlighter here. And <clears throat> he saved us through the washing and the regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, whom he poured out upon us abundantly through Christ Jesus, our Savior, verse 7, that having been justified, justified not by our own works, but we were made right before God by his grace. That's it, by his grace. And that we should become, and, and, and through all of this, through Christ's justification, it has made us here's according to the hope, glory to God, of eternal life. And this is a faithful saying that these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. Those of you that are saved, you got to make sure that you maintain good works. These things are good and profitable, not just to you, but to all men. It is not uncommon when an author or a writer of a novel or a filmmaker, for that matter, is preparing a movie. It is not uncommon that the story will, will change before the final product and uh, sometimes it's uh, something to do with the, the character. Uh, sometimes it's something to do with the plot. But most of the time, it has something to do with the ending. Uh, writers usually rewrite their script to change the ending. And I'm going somewhere. The creative forces behind the story would take a second look, if you would, and, and decide, you know, this needs a better ending. Uh, take, for example, Rocky. The, have you seen the movie Rocky with Sylvester Stallone? It was his first big hit. It was his first big movie. And he was not only the star of the movie. I don't know if you knew this, but he was also he also wrote the script. However, his first version of the story was very different from the uh, uh, the final one, from the one that finally made it uh, to the theaters. The first version was totally different. The, the biggest difference was that in the original draft, Rocky didn't just lose the fight to Apollo Creed. And I don't think I'm giving much away because this, this movie is very old. You can watch it. But he didn't just throw the, the fight. He didn't just lose the fight. He threw the fight. And this is the first script. He threw the fight for money so that he could afford to purchase a pet shop, right, for, for Adrian. Now, Stallone eventually realized that it's, you know, this is not something a noble character would do. And, and this particular twist does not inspire a sequel. And so the ending uh, was changed to what we see today, all right? 
Uh, also, another big, big movie is Star Wars. Now, the, 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 that franchise has seen several changes along the way. For example, Luke Skywalker's, his, his original name was Luke Starkiller. Bet you didn't know that. And, and the name of, of the third installment was originally uh, The Revenge of the Jedi, not The Return of the Jedi. And, and there were even posters printed, uh, and you can still find those po posters printed. There were trailers that were made uh, with the title, Revenge of the Jedi. And, uh, and you know, you can still uh, get on eBay, maybe get posters of Revenge of, of the Jedi, uh, because it was out there. And, and, but they changed the script. And, and the biggest change in the third installment of the series, the Star Wars uh, series, was that George Lucas intended for Han Solo to die at the end. And it's been said that he changed the outcome. Uh, why? Because he was afraid that the death of Han Solo might negatively affect merchandising. And so there are various reasons why these guys change their script. And I'm saying that sometimes the writer's original idea for a story and the characters and the ending is not the same as the final idea. Are y'all with me? As, as it, it goes through uh, rewrites upon rewrites, the story gets better and the story gets stronger, it gets more meaningful. And, and this is why there is a, a saying in, in publishing that great books aren't written, but great books are rewritten. And it, it takes more than just one pass at a manuscript to get it right. Are you all with me? To, to make it as good as it is supposed to be or as good as it, it can be. I, and I would say the same is true for, for sermons. All right. It, it is in the rewriting process that I believe greatness is born. All right. And, and there's an old gospel song that, that I love. The title says it all. It says, Mercy Rewrote My Life. All right. And, and I'm sure you've, you've heard the song. The, the verses go something like uh, the first verse. For years I've traveled a road all wrong. My heart has lost every joy, every song. Till grace placed me right where I belong. When mercy rewrote my life. And, and I was thinking of this song while I was working on, on today's sermon because I realized that this is the message of the Christmas season. It, it, it's, it's about how God sent his son Jesus into the world to rewrite the entire story of humankind, to rewrite history one life at a time. Through his mercy and through his grace, he has rewritten many lives, including mine. How about you? It, it is in the rewriting process that the story gets better. Wish I had some help. And, and there's no question that, that we were all at one time living stories that were uh, in, in desperate need of an editor's touch. I, I, I'm going somewhere because I'm feeling God in this word today. Now, this is the final week of our of our series called Tis the Season to be Holy. And uh, those of you who've been with me from the beginning of this series, uh, maybe three weeks ago, we've, we've been exploring some of the foundational truths of the Christmas message. Uh, in week one, we talked about how Christmas is a friend request from God. Jesus wants to be your best friend. Uh, you, you remember, right? Uh, then last week we talked about how uh, dropping the security blanket and letting go of our fear, you remember, and living life with courageous faith in faith in who? Faith in the goodness and the greatness of our God. And so today uh, we want to talk about how mercy, 
Somebody say mercy. How mercy has the power to change your life story and rewrite your ending. Some of you, the story of your life thus far has been a mess. Oh, can I get some help here? Some of you, for some of you, the story of your life so far isn't worth even reading, much less publishing. Now, in order to fully appreciate the message of Christmas and, and the power of the gospel, uh, and, and, and the gospel's ability, really, to rewrite the story of your life, we need to fully understand three things. Uh, the first thing we need to fully understand uh, is that we need to, uh, to, uh, that we need to fully understand the mess that we're in. Now, we've got to understand these three realities in order to, to help us better appreciate, if you would, the meaning of the Christmas message. Now, in Titus 3, the, the lesson today that we're looking at, uh, we, we want to look at these three principles. Like I said, the first one is we need to fully understand the mess that we're in. Now, when I wrote my book, uh, those of you who, who don't know, yes, I wrote a book, it's called, And Then God Created Woman, Discovering the True Value of a Woman. When I wrote that book, I, I, um, I got to know the editor, my editor, uh, the guy who edited my book. His name uh, was Jim Rill, and uh, I got to know him really well, and in talking to Jim, uh, about the, you know, the process of editing my manuscript, uh, Jim was uh, laughing about a, a problem that, that some editors frequently face. Uh, the author will turn in a book, he says, and, and say, well, it's perfect the way it is. Nothing needs to change. And now, uh, just for the record, I wasn't like that, all right? But he says authors will come and say nothing needs to change. Everything is perfect. He said the authors would insist that there's nothing that needs to be changed, and they would resist the every correction and every suggestion that the editors would make. Uh, and so the editor would say, wait a minute, for example, there, there are some mistakes here, and uh, Des Moines is not in Idaho, but it's in Iowa, all right? And, and they'll make mistakes, big mistakes like that, but yet they still insist that there's no mistake. And, um, and you know, there'll be misspelled words. So we need an editor. We need someone to go over what we've written to make sure that everything's right. But still some writers would insist it's perfect the way it is. And, and you know what? There's a word for that. That word is called denial. <laughs> and, 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 and the would-be authors aren't the only ones who have a problem with uh, denial. I have heard more than... Uh, more people than I can count, really, uh, who have said, I don't need God. I don't need the church. I don't need Christianity. The other day we were uh, looking, I think it was Chris and I, we were looking at, at some comments that some people made. And uh, it, it was uh, against, Christ, against Christianity. And no, I believe it was, they said that we were reading something where Netflix had put up a, a, a tweet uh, that, you know, it says hail Satan or something like that, but we didn't know for, and, and I'm not trying to spread any rumors here. We don't, we don't really know if Netflix actually said that because if Netflix actually said that and tweeted that, um, that would be, uh, financial suicide for them. Believe me. So I doubt very much that they said it, but we were looking at the article, Chris and I, and one of the comments was from, uh, a young lady who said she was an atheist and, um, you know, and, you know, she really, she, she was bragging about the fact that, uh, church was nonsense and Christianity was nonsense. So it is out there. It's real. There are people who really feel they don't need the church. They don't need God. They don't need Christianity. My life is fine the way it is. And, and a lot of people process like that. Amen. And, and I'm going to, uh, one of these days, uh, when, when, you know, maybe after Christmas, I'm going to get into a study that I'm, I'm actually on where, uh, it has been scientifically proven. Hear this. And I'm just going to give you the, the snapshot. It's been scientifically proven that God exists. 
when I read that article and uh, heard what the guy had to say, it just simply blew my mind. And I'm going to get into it. I uh, can't get into it right now, but uh, I will. I promise you. Now, back to what we were uh, talking about, though. Uh, people uh, just feel they don't need God. They don't need the church. Uh, you know, and, and yet you... You look at the story of their life. You know, some people feel they don't need God because they haven't done anything wrong. They said, well, I don't need forgiveness. I, I've heard people say that. You know, I don't need to be forgiven. I haven't, I haven't done anything wrong. Um, and yet, when you look at the story of their lives, it is filled with confusion. It is filled with hurt. It is filled with rage. It is filled with disappointment. Uh, <clears throat> it is filled with relationships that have failed and everything about their lives, their lives, uh, spells out tragedy in the making. And yet these people still insist that I'm fine the way I am. This, this is not just true for uh, on a personal level either, because we see it in the news every single day. We, we, we hear uh, things aren't as, as they should be. And, uh, you know, and, and listen, let, let me say this to you, people of God. Too many people have come to accept anger, and hostility, and, and the abuse, and the hate, uh, and and they accept these things as the way things should be. And and let me tell you this: Have you have you looked at people lately, or interacted with people lately when they're driving? Uh, listen, when and I think psychologically, what's happening to people when they get in the car? is they feel that the car is a safe haven. So, and they're protected by, I don't know, the metal uh, uh, frame around their car. So they feel that they can get away with anything. They can get away with cussing. They can get away with swearing. They can get away with showing you the finger, even for no reason. I, I've, had, I've had experiences where people, listen to me, I've had experiences where people cut me off and then show me the finger. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Uh, listen, people are just are just hateful, and and I believe uh, that they've come to accept that as the norm. This is the way sh things should be. You know, on Wednesday, if those of you that were uh, with with me uh, in my Bible study uh, on Wednesday, uh, I listen that that study just um, really. Um, affected my life in such a positive way. And if you have not yet, if you didn't hear uh, the teaching on Wednesday, go back to the video. It's there somewhere. You can get it on uh, Vimeo, by the way. It's there. Listen, that impact, let me tell you the part that impacted my life more than anything else. And, and I don't remember a, a teaching that I have done that has ever really spoken to me and impacted me the way last Wednesday's uh, teaching did. Let me tell you what happened. I, I spoke about uh, that the, the fact that God wants us to be in the image of Jesus. You remember, and and we 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 assess that word image, and and you know we went back to the original meaning of the word, and we determined that that word image meant. Uh, not just a, a vague reflection uh, through a dirty mirror, but it, it, it represented an express image of God. In other words, God wants us to be like Jesus. He wants us to be an exact replica. That's a good word. An exact replica or reflection of Jesus. And that thing, listen, that thing impacted my life in such a way I can't even stop thinking about it because it, it just, it just absolutely blew my mind how far away we are from where God wants us to be. He wants us to reflect Jesus. He wants our lives and, and obviously not, not our our physical uh, uh, being, our physical selves, but he wants <clears throat> our attitudes, our ways, our inner man, our spirit to be like Jesus. 
Amen. And, and, and the Bible says, Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but yet he made himself of what? No reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus wants us to be like him. Are y'all with me? So everything we do, we're driving in a car, amen, and someone cuts you off. Or, or someone is doing something that, that maybe they're driving too, driving too slow and it's upsetting you. Remember who God wants you to be. When you're interacting with that slow uh, 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 cashier at, at the register, remember who God wants you to be. When you're interacting with people that are just driving you up the walls, remember who God wants you. He wants you to be an express image, an exact image replica of Jesus. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Is your life, are your actions reflecting who God wants you to be? And for many of us, if we're going to be honest, we're nowhere near where God wants us to be. Just just in the way we think, in the way we process, in the way we, we handle things and deal with people, we're nowhere near where God wants us to be. Let's face it, society is broken, and it's broken because we as individuals are broken. Society is broke because individuals are broken. And from a psychological perspective, the first way out of brokenness is to fully understand, listen, to understand that it is not okay. The way we're living our lives is not okay. Are y'all with me? This is not the way I want my life to be. This is not the story that I want my life to tell. The way I am today, my way, my attitude, my disposition, my idiosyncrasies, these are not, hallelujah, how I want my story told. This is not my story. Come on in here, somebody. This is not what God wants for my life. And we have to accept that. We have to, we have to come to terms with that. In our text today, Paul uh, begins to talk about understanding where we are and understanding the mess that we're in. Come on in here. Uh, he said in, in his words, he says, for uh, at one time, we were foolish, we were disobedient, we were deceived, serving various lusts or enslaved by all kinds of passions. Come on in here, somebody. And, 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 and pleasures. We were one, at one point living in malice and we envied one another and we were hateful and we were being hated at the same time. Uh, come on, what a messed up life we've had. Oh, if we should, if we could just admit it. There are some of you listening to me today, some of you listening to the sound of my voice who would say, this describes my life, Bishop. This is how I was, preacher. This is me you're talking about. Glory to God. And it certainly describes my life. I, I don't know about some of you, but it describes my life, especially the foolish part, especially this part. And this is true for all of us. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been in church. This is your story at one time. And, and what this is telling us is this, that uh, a life without Christ will certainly lead to heartaches. That's what this verse is saying. Without Jesus, we're all headed for despair. Uh, do I have a witness in the house? And that's because all of us, come on, say all of us. Scripture says what? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Are you with me? All of us have sinned. These are my words in brackets. 
have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And, and it also says this, follow closely with this one, chapter 6, 23. For the wages of sin is what? Is death. All right? The wages of sin is death. Now, and, and here's where the plot thickens. We are all in a great big mess. And I know I've been negative so far with, with the teaching, but just hang in there with me. We, we got to face the reality of who we are. And that's one thing that's wrong with the church and wrong with people today is that we're not facing our realities. We, 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 we're like, uh, um, the ostrich where we just stick our heads in the sand and pretend everything's great. But the only thing that is great, uh, 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 with us is the great big mess that we're in. And, and there's nothing you or I can do about it. It's not nothing anyone can do about it. Are you all with me? I, I was just reading a, an article recently how, uh, the powers that be, and I'm not going to get too deep into it, but the powers that be are just seeking to, uh, to, uh, lower the population of the world. In, in, in fact, they, they want, they want the world's population to go down to a, a billion. Think about that for a minute. So they're doing everything within their power to try to kill and destroy people. And, and listen, a lot of these things that they've unleashed on the world, we have no control over. And so the plot thickens. We're, we're in a big mess. And there's nothing most of us can do about it. We're like fish. We're like fishes in a... We're like fishes. We're like fish in a bucket. Helpless and lost come on in here we need to be saved but we're incapable of saving ourselves we need deliverance from this world but we're incapable of de incapable of delivering ourselves we we need help with covid-19 but we're incapable of helping ourselves we need saving, but we can't save ourselves. And this leads us to the second vital truth that I want to share with you today. Watch this. We need to fully understand that there is only one way out of the mess that we're in. Somebody say that with me. Only one way out. Only one way out. And, and, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what that one day, one way out of the mess is, right? It's Jesus. Come on, it's Jesus. Just testify. It's, it's Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. For I've touched the hem of his garment. Listen to what Paul said. Listen to what Paul said here. He said, but when the kindness of God and the, uh, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, it appeared not by works of righteousness. Come on in here. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his what? According to his mercy. Come on in here, somebody. Mercy. Come on, say it with me. Mercy rewrote my life. It was mercy that rewrote my life. Now watch this. Watch this. And, and he goes on, he says, he saved us through the washing of the regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ our Savior. Just just a moment ago, I, I quoted Romans. You remember, the wages of sin is death. Y'all remember that? But here's what the rest of the verse says. The wages of sin is death, but what? The gift of God. Come on, tell somebody, uh, I need some good news. The gift of God. Glory to God, it's Christmas, and we love passing our gifts on Christmas. But the greatest gift that anyone can ever give you, the greatest gift anyone has ever given to me and to you, is the gift of eternal life. Come on in here, somebody. He says that the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you have ever tried to get your act together, if you've ever tried to fix all your fault and 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 overcome all your weaknesses and 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 you know it can't be done come on in here at least you can't do it by yourself 
We, we paddle and we paddle and, uh, with, with all our might and we still end up further from the shore. Oh, do I have a witness? We've tried everything. You've tried one type of, 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 of guy and, and that guy failed you. You try another type and that failed you. Uh, come on in here, somebody. You've tried, uh, to, 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 um, to kind of ease the burden and ease the the pain by turning to alcohol. Come on in here, somebody. But it still doesn't help. It's like trying to paddle your way to the shore, but only find that you are way out in the deep. If you know anything at all about history, then you know that messed up lives are not a 21st century phenomenon. Can I talk to somebody? It's been going on since day one. World and history are filled with messed up lives. God understands this about us. Uh, tell your neighbor, God understands. And so he, what he did was he sent his son Jesus into the world, and that's what Christmas is. Not only to live among us, uh, come on, he not only sent his son to live among us as a, a great leader and a teacher, showing us what life in God is all about, showing us what life in God can be. But ultimately, he came to pave the way and pay the price for our salvation. Uh, how many love God? How many love our God? This is why the apostle Peter, uh, this is why Peter said in the book of Acts, Peter says, <clears throat> He said, nor is there salvation in any other, uh, for there is none other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Are you all with me? There's no other name, no other person, no other God, but this God. See, when Jesus died on the cross, all the ugliness that Paul has mentioned at the beginning, uh, the malice, the envy, you remember, the hate was laid upon his shoulders. Are you all listening to me, somebody? I wish I could get some help. Uh, every sin that anyone has ever committed was placed upon his shoulders. With his death, though, he paid the price for our sin. And then, by his resurrection, he proved once and for all that he has power over sin. See, sin may have power to destroy people's lives, but it doesn't have to destroy your life. Sin doesn't have to manipulate you. Sin doesn't have to have power over you because God's power is available to you. Watch this. Uh, the Bible says through the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. How many need to be washed? How many need to be renewed? How many need to be regenerated? Come on. That's Jesus saying, in other words, I'm going to rewrite the script of your life. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verse 11. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you or give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in you. Uh, listen to me, saints of God, make no mistake about it. Uh, our lives were not headed in a good direction uh, before Jesus came. Uh, I know some of you thought you were having fun. Uh, even now, some of you in church uh, would want to go back to the good old days, uh, thinking that there's something out there uh, that'll satisfy you. Uh, but oh, you're, you were not headed in a good direction. Uh, you may not have realized it. You may not have even 
uh, thought about it. But thank God that he saved some of us uh, when he did. Uh, he came, hallelujah. Ah, uh, we were in a bad position. We were in bad shape. Uh, we were in heading in the wrong direction. Uh, but then came Christmas. Uh, then came Jesus. Uh, and God's mercy uh, rewrote my life. Now, now, this brings me, and I'm almost finished, uh, but this brings me to the third and final amen truth that we need to fully understand you must fully understand that God wants to change everything about your story about my story about our story he doesn't just want to change the ending come on can I talk to somebody I know what the ending will be are you all with me somebody but God doesn't just want to change the ending but he wants to change uh, uh, everything about the plot. Uh, he doesn't just want you to die uh, and go to heaven instead of hell. Uh, he wants to change the plot of your life. Uh, he wants the twist. Uh, he wants your character's motivation. Uh, he wants the supporting cast. Uh, and of course, he wants the final outcome uh, all to change. Uh, an outcome where you the hero come on in here uh, don't you know that you're the hero of your story I'm the hero of my story uh, this is my story as Fanny Crosby says this is my song I'm the hero of my story and every obstacle uh, every amen thing that gets in my way uh, the story overcomes it uh, when Jesus begins uh, to write my life's story uh, do I have a witness in here uh, when he begins to write it uh, every obstacle uh, every amen enemy uh, every amen enemy that tries to come up against me after he rewrites my story it has a happy ending come on the hero who was I wins the day happily ever after they say isn't the result of our own awesomeness but happily ever after is the result of God's power God's spirit in me it's the power of God God's spirit uh, come on y'all uh, working through me uh, by the gift of his grace uh, how many love the Lord uh, I thank him uh, for what he has done uh, he says in verse 7 and we're gonna close uh, but this is what he says uh, that having been justified by his grace uh, we should become his according to the hope of eternal life uh, then he goes on to say in verse 8 uh, he says this is a faithful saying uh, and these things I want to affirm constantly uh, that those who have believed in God come on in here are you a believer <laughs> come on hel help somebody <laughs> ask them the question question are you a believer y'all don't hear me ah those who have believed he says is a good thing I know the scripture myself it says these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should carefully maintain good works y'all don't hear me and listen to the final phrase the final part of the story says in verse 8 <clears throat> these things are excellent and are profitable to everyone 
Uh, in other words, God wants to change everything about your story. God, amen, instead of the narrative of your life uh, being based on a person uh, who lives only for themselves, uh, God wants to rewrite your story uh, instead of a person uh, who thinks, praise God, uh, only of themselves. God wants to rewrite your story instead of a person who sinks deeper and deeper in the muck and the mire. God wants to rewrite your story instead of a person who tries to find help uh, from all other sources uh, apart from God. Uh, God wants to rewrite your story instead of a person uh, who sinks deeper and deeper uh, in the muck and the mire. Uh, God wants to rewrite your story uh, instead of going from one man to another uh, and one woman to another. Uh, God wants to rewrite Write your story instead of trying to fill that God shaped void that's in your life with everything else but God. God wants to rewrite your story. I don't know about you, but God wants my story to be epic. Oh, do I have a witness in the house? He wants my story to be a blockbuster. I wish I had some help. Your story can be about someone whose life is ever moving in the right direction. A life that's filled with hope. A life that's focused on doing what is good. The things that are excellent. The things that are profitable. A life that reflects nobody else but Jesus, a life that eats Jesus, that sleeps Jesus, that sweats Jesus. You get up in the morning with Jesus on your mind. Jesus is your God. Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is just everything. Come on in here that you would ever want. I heard somebody said, wish I could preach like I'm feeling it. I heard somebody said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. Tell somebody, come on, type it. Tell somebody God is getting ready to rewrite your story. Allow him to rewrite the script. Allow him to edit your story. I don't know about you, but I've made some wrong decisions. I've made some bad decisions. I've made some crazy decisions in my life and sometimes do I have a witness on this one sometimes you wish you could have a do over sometimes you wish you could do it all over again because if you did you wouldn't make the mistakes that you made the fault before you wouldn't shack up like you did before you wouldn't amen I wish I had some real people that I could preach like I want to, that I could preach like I'm feeling it. You wouldn't want to steal that first kiss that you did back then. If you only had a do-over, you would make better decisions. You would make better choices. But I just rose to tell you, everybody listening to my voice, God, this Christmas season, is giving you an opportunity for a do-over. He wants to grab your manuscript. He wants to grab the manuscript of your life. He wants to go over and edit some of the stuff that are not good for the story. Wish I had some help. 
Uh, he wants to edit some stuff uh, that will allow the story uh, to work out uh, for your good. Uh, and we know uh, that all things, uh, come on in here, uh, work out together uh, for good uh, to them who love God uh, and to them who are the called unto his purpose. I'm finished. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hope you got something from this today. Ask any author. I'm an author myself. I went through a lot of this. Ask any author. They'll tell you the most exciting part of the writing process is the rewriting phase. And that's because you never know exactly where the story will go. But you can sure be sure of this. When you rewrite the story, it will improve. And during the rewriting phase, listen to me, listen to me carefully, people. During the rewriting phase, the characters get stronger. Glory to God. The dialogue gets snappier. The plot gets thicker and the ending gets better. There are some here today listening to the sound of my voice who are in need of a rewrite. Come on, be honest. If you need a rewrite, let me see your hands. If you need a rewrite, just, just, just text that. I need a rewrite. If you're not embarrassed, if you're not ashamed, if you want, listen, the bottom line is all of us need a rewrite. So don't be ashamed to write it. You fully understand that the story of your life isn't working out as it should. And you desperately need a change. Here's what I want you to understand. And I'm finished. Whether it's your first time experiencing church, whether it's your first time hearing me preach, or whether you've been exposed to it all your life, here's what I want you to know. God's grace is available to you. If you've tried and you've failed, if in the past you've tried and you've failed, just know this, his grace is available to you. There's a song that says, Lord, I'm available to you. But his grace is also available. And I want you to know this. Those of you that are listening to me, I want you to listen very carefully. Because I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Because I know some of you out there are hurting. Some of you are even saying right now, preacher, man, that, that message sound good. But is it real? Am I beyond saving? Am I beyond redemption? Can I tell you something? No situation is beyond God's redemption. Nothing is too hard for God. No soul is beyond salvation. You got to understand what his death meant. He died on the cross. So that you might be forgiven. You and you, especially you, might be forgiven. And he rose from the dead that you too can experience his resurrection power. Your life doesn't have to be what you sometimes fear it will become. Why? Because of Christmas. Jesus came into the world, a world full of darkness, a world full of hate, a world full of despair and sadness. And he came into the world to fill it with his marvelous light. Christmas rewrote my history so that God's mercy could rewrite my life. Hear me, saints of God. My story has a happy ending. 
Are y'all with me? There's nothing that he can't do. There's no problem too hard for God. Nothing shall be called impossible. And you're out there listening to my voice. Some of you, listen, if we're, we're some, some of us are confused right now with what's going on in our world. We hear some stuff. It's beyond belief. It's just, blo- it's just blowing our minds. The stuff that's happening, the stuff that COVID has exposed that's happening in this world, how wicked and evil men are trying to wipe out entire races, trying to wipe out billions and billions of people from off the face of the earth deliberately. Y'all better wake up, people of God. Mercy rewrote my life. And what I love about Jesus is this. Glory. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know in whom I believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord is my keeper, and I will not fear what men can do unto me. Glory to God. Listen, if God don't want them to touch you, they can't touch you. If God doesn't want them to hurt you, they can't hurt you. Have you considered my servant Job? God asked the devil, glory! They need permission to affect your life. They need permission to change the directions of your life. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Surrender yourself to God. Surrender your life to God. Give him the manuscript of your life. That you might be able to sing like Fanny Crosby Wright. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. This is a blind woman writing. Visions of rapture now burst at my sight. Angels descending. Gift from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, Lord. Praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you. I hope you got something from this. Those of you that are not saved, let me say this real quick. Because this is important. If you're not saved, if you've not yet given your life to the Lord, or if this program has been a blessing to you, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or praise report, you can text it to us. There's a number on the screen. You can email us. There's a the um, email address right there posted. And if you're on the church's website, there's a connection card right there on the website that you can just fill out right next to the, where the video, where you're watching this video now to the right, there's a connection card there. You can fill it out. If you need to give your, if you need to give your life to the Lord, I want you to do this with me right now. I want you to do this with me right now. I want you to bow your heads. I feel in my spirit that there's someone out there who heard this word who need God you need him more than ever you need him because you need to be like him you need him because you need his Holy Spirit in your life your life need need to bear the fruit of the Spirit you need him because 
you need help to get through, to navigate through this life. So I want to pray for you. And it's easy. Just invite him into your heart to come in. That's all you need to do. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you don't have it all together. Admit it. Admit that you've made mistakes in the past. Admit that you need God. And admit that you don't understand it all. None of us do. None of us did at the beginning. I didn't understand it all. In fact, even now I don't understand it all. But it's not about understanding it all. It's about knowing that he died for you. And you can accept that in your heart. And ask him to be your friend. Ask him to be your God. To be Lord and Savior. And I'm going to help you do that. Just bow your heads with me and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. Sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Forgive me of all the sins I have committed. All the sins I ever committed. Even the sins that I will commit after today. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Come in today, come in to stay. Be my God, and I your child. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, if you've invited the Lord in your heart, please go ahead, find a way to get in touch with me. You can you can text me from that nu- to that number. You can email me at that email address on the screen. Or if you're on our website, on church, the church's website, look to your right, just below where the uh, where the player is. Look there, you'll see. Some of you might have to scroll a little bit down, but it's to the right. You'll see a connection card. You can fill that out, complete it, and I will be in touch with. You. Let me know that you gave your heart to the Lord. Let me know that you begun to follow Jesus and I will be in touch with you and I will point you in the right direction I will help you whatever way I can in Jesus name all right God bless you everyone thank you so much Uh, have a very Merry Christmas when it comes this Friday please be safe Uh, still I know it's Christmas I know you want to enjoy yourself you want to be happy and, and you should you should but be careful be careful, practice social distancing, for, uh, especially with people that you are not um, terribly familiar with <laughs> or not familiar with at all, people you haven't seen in a long time, you're not sure, practice safe, safe uh, uh, distancing because uh, you never know. And, and believe me, if, 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 if they have any sense, they'll know, they'll not be offended, all right? All right, because they need to protect themselves as well. All right, so please stay safe um, and wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wash your hands, people. Wash your hands at least 20 seconds when you're washing your hands. Keep that soap on your hands for at least 20 seconds while you're scrubbing it. And make sure it's nice and clean, all right? Keep your hands washed. Uh, Keep your face covered when you go out, especially and uh, just protect yourself, all right? Because I want to have you around. We want to enjoy the glory of God together, all right? Because it's going to be a glorious year, 2021, for the people of God. I know that. I feel that in my spirit. And um, uh, again, join me on this uh, our next service. Our next service, let me just make sure. Our next service will be on the 27th which is Sunday so we won't have another service until Sunday all right the 27th so I will see you then please join us if you have not yet subscribed you can do so now whether you're on Facebook YouTube Twitter uh, Periscope whatever they do to have you subscribe or or like or friend whatever it is that they do please do it with Grace Temple And make sure that you're in the know so that when uh, we come live on air, you'll be able to to know it. 
all right, it'll it'll notify you. And I, I will also point everyone towards Vimeo. Download the Vimeo app because um, that's where we are. That's our base now. Uh, you know, these days, Vimeo is our base. So uh, you can download Vimeo. You can find us at Grace Temple Event on Vimeo and follow us. All right. Also, um, the easy for, for those of you who just can't be bothered with the technology and the mess, the easiest way to get us is to go to our website. I've sent out the link. I'm going to post it on um, on here one of these days. It's, it's real simple. It's it's, sim it's not this, but it's similar. Our website is gracetempleonline.com. This part, Grace Temple. See where it says email us at info at gracetempleonline.com. You go to gracetempleonline.com and, and you find us there. All right? And um, go to the second to last tab. That's where we're broadcasting live. And that's the easiest thing to do. Just go to gracetempleonline.com and watch us there. And you can even give there. And you can, uh, in fact, it's, it's pretty cool when you go to watch us on Grace Temple Online because it allows you question and answers. It allows you the chat feature so you can chat back and forth on Vimeo. So uh, please check it out. All right, gracetempleonline.com. All right, people of God, love you all. Stay saved. Stay sweet. God bless you. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Sing that last verse. Tara, sing that last verse one more time. Hallelujah. Are you looking forward to that? Amen.
Yeah. 